thank you so much for once again joining us for another one of our animal care interviews. This is where we share, showcase how amazing the animal care field is in a lot of different ways and just how many careers are out there. So if there's something that you maybe are thinking about and you want to work with animals, keep watching this video series because we have some amazing ones I'm really excited about today and I can't wait to get into it. But first, I'm Keeper Kylie. I'm here with the Lion Habitat Ranch. And I want to give a huge shout out to those who have been supporting us. Thank you guys so much. Your donations have been absolutely amazing in our time of being closed. So we want to thank you for that. And if you are able to keep donating, we still appreciate that. So please feel free to donate right here on our Facebook page, or you can go to the lionhabitatranch.org. Now, before we get into this too much, I want to say that, by the way, these interviews are strictly kind of personal interviews between those who want to go and share. So remember that the interviews are non-representative of the keeper's facilities that they are coming from. They are all personal uh, views of the keepers themselves and all those participants. So we really want to thank them for taking time out of their schedule to do this as a way to give back to their community and to help reach more and more kids. So this is something that they're doing on their own time. They're volunteering for this and we are super appreciative of that. So that's a really good thing and we couldn't do it without them. So without further ado, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what you do. Hi, um, my name is Katie. I work currently in an animal commissary, uh, but I have also worked as a keeper before. I've worked with fish, I've worked with all sorts of animals, and I've done lots of educating as well. Um, so yeah, I'm originally from Michigan. I've moved to Florida and I've actually moved to New York at some point in between there. So I've kind of been all over the place. Wow. So yeah, we've mentioned this before, guys, when it comes to the animal career field, it can be pretty competitive. So a lot of times you kind of have to go where the jobs are. Um, now you said you are currently a commissary keeper. I bet that's a word that a lot mm -hmm. of our fans haven't heard before. Why don't you go ahead and explain what that does? So the commissary is basically the kitchen. So it's where we make all of the food for all of the animals. Um, lots of zoos do it kind of differently. Some of them have one central kitchen where all the keepers go at a certain time of day and they all make their own foods. Some of them, like the place where I work, we have one kitchen, but we have a specific amount of people who work there. So we make all the food for everybody and then we give it to the keepers who actually give it to the animals. So I don't really take care of the animals like hands on every day, but I'm making their food. I'm putting together the things that they're going to be getting throughout the day and then sending it out to the keepers. That seems like a really big job. When you think about just how many animals can be on one property, that's probably a lot of meals. It's got to be like working at a restaurant. Yes, it is almost exactly like a restaurant. I was, uh, I worked in the cafeteria when I was in college all four years. So that actually really helped me out because we run almost exactly the same. We just don't do as much cooking. Um, but we go through about 10,000 pounds of food every day. <laughs> to kind of give you an idea, guys, that's about what a male Asian elephant weighs. So they mm -hmm. go through the same amount of food that an elephant weighs. That is mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. Wow. And talk about an important job. You know, we, we talk about how much our food has to be for that animal. And it makes a lot of sense. You can't feed meat to something that doesn't eat, you know, only eats grasses and things like that. So that is a huge amount of responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. So that being said, what are some either education, um, certifications, or even just skills? What are some really good skills that you'd want to see in a coworker? Yeah. Um, so for us, there's a lot of little details because we, like you said, we need to look at each animal and we need to know what that animal needs. Um, we need to know if they need to get something that some other animal can't get or vice versa. You know, something that's good for one animal might be very dangerous to another one. So we really have to kind of focus on those things. Um, and then things change a lot. So when we have an animal that gets pregnant or maybe they are a little bit too overweight, their diet will change on a regular basis. So I don't come in knowing exactly what I'm gonna be making necessarily. I might have a good general idea because I've been doing it for a while, but it could be, oh, well now they get 100 grams less. And while that doesn't sound like a lot sometimes, these things can be a very big difference, you know, or maybe they don't get some food item because we found out that they're allergic to it or something like that. So we really look for that detail oriented, you know, making sure that you're following up on yourself kind of idea. 
So let's go through it. Take us through your day. When do you start in the morning and what's a, a normal day look like for you? Yeah, um, for the most part, our days look fairly similar. Like I said, the biggest differences are usually if a diet changes. So I get up at 3.30 in the morning and then I start work at five in the morning. <laughs> so I am usually up before most people are up. Um, and then I actually work a 10 hour shift. So that's a little bit unusual sometimes, um, depending on facilities. Uh, most people work an eight hour day. So they'll, you know, go in at eight and leave at five or something like that. But I go in at five and I leave at 4 p.m. But I only work four days a week. <laughs> so I get a three day weekend, which is great. Um, but yeah, we come in in the morning, we do a quick meeting where we all kind of, um, you know, talk about anything that has changed. If we have those diet changes, if there's something going on within the zoo that affects us, like if there's a uh, hospital treatment or something going on, a surgery, something that impacts us in some way, um, then we all are kind of on the same page. Then we get to our stations and in the kitchen, we start cutting everything up. Um, and then we do, so let's see, we make our diets from five in the morning till noon, then we have lunch, and then we spend the rest of the afternoon getting ready for the next day. <laughs> Um, and then we also have a couple other areas kind of within the kitchen. So if you're not in the kitchen cutting up, you could be doing dishes all day, which sounds, I realize, terrible, but I really enjoy it <laughs> um, because we get all of our dishes back. We want to make sure they're nice and clean for all the animals and we have to keep them clean because as soon as they come in, we need to start using them again. There's so many dishes. Um, and then the other thing we do, which is really important is actually bringing the food out. So we have a team of two people where same thing at five in the morning, they start getting everything ready onto a truck and they actually drive it all around the zoo and then bring it to each of the keepers. So by the time they get to a certain point in their routine, we have our diets ready and then they start taking the diets out. It's, it's clockwork with you guys. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's making sure the entire machine is running smoothly. That's, it's a lot of cogs in the wheel, mm -hmm. but it's so important. It's, it's like we were talking about like being in a restaurant, you, you don't want to eat on a dirty dish, right guys? You know, when your food is served to you, you want to make sure it's clean and it's healthy. The same thing is going to go for these animals. And so, like she said, as soon as the dish comes in, it's going to get used. So it's got to, just like your, your restaurant and how you're working in, this is a way to go and, and make sure that that keeps really, really best care possible. So this is a really fun career. It sounds like, especially for somebody who, you know, there's a lot of people out there who like to cook, who work in a kitchen, but sometimes those human kitchens can be a little too stressful or, or you know, too, too boisterous. I feel like this is a really good calm when people who work with animals tend to be a little bit more calm, mm -hmm. but um, fun. And so that sounds like an amazing, amazing job. However, not the 3.30 in the morning part. <laughs> <laughs> That's really awesome. So that being said, uh, do you have a favorite animal that you like to go and uh, take care of beating your previous experience? Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite animal, be it a particular one or maybe in a whole species? Um, oh, I always hate the favorite animal question because I always feel like it's so many animals. Yes. <laughs> um, a lot of my friends associate me with sharks because I do like to talk about sharks. I'm very passionate about them. Um, but then again, I also like snakes and spiders. Uh, I also really like rhinos. I like sheep and goats. I like stingrays. It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> yep. Guys, so. ask a zookeeper what their favorite animal is. And our next answer is usually like, okay, can you pick a favorite star in the sky kind of mm -hmm. thing? Like there's just mm -hmm. so many. But that's great. I too love sheep and goats. Yeah, Yay. yeah they're very <laughs> underrated. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, is there a particular animal when it comes to making their diets that really require very specific details that you're like, oh, we got to make this animal's diet, again, be it a species or maybe a particular mm -hmm. individual? Yes, absolutely. Um, I describe what we do almost as feeding little kids, like toddlers. You know how kids will just, they like this, they don't like that. There's no rhyme or reason to it sometimes. It's very similar. Um, and especially with primates. So primates are very similar to us. They like lots of variety. They like um, things in a certain way. They ne don't necessarily like a new thing. Sometimes they like a new thing one day. Sometimes they don't like it the next day. It's always a challenge. So with our primates, especially, we 
have lots of different things that they rotate through on a daily basis. They're not getting the exact same food every single day, but it still has to fill that nutritional component of they're getting the same um, minerals and vitamins and all other sorts of things like that. Um, but we also need to look at things like, oh, well, they don't really like this color of food versus that color of food. Oh, they don't like the little ones. They like them in big pieces. Um, the big, the best one I have for them is that most of our primates, regardless of species and regardless of living together, so just across the park, have just decided that they don't like kale that is purple. We get kale that is green and we get kale that is purple. It is the same plant and they've decided they won't eat it. So at this point, it's we just don't even give it to them because they'll just leave it on the ground and no one will eat it. And they'll just, they know that they're going to eventually get something else that they want more. Every mom watching this right now just went, mm -hmm, yep, mm -hmm. yep, I get that mm -hmm. one. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like the pasta that's different colors. It's all the same thing. It all tastes the same. They just don't want to believe it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> Um, so what is something about your job that nobody would ever expect about what you do? Um, I feel like it's that clockwork that you talked about. Like a lot of people, when I tell them I work in the kitchen, they're just like, oh, okay. Like it's a kitchen. I know what a kitchen looks like. Um, but occasionally I get a chance to bring people back and to actually see where it is I work and see everything that goes into it. And they are just amazed by the amount of food and all of that work that we put into it. So like I said, you know, we have people who start off in the morning going out and delivering things. They're delivering browse, which is like branches and sticks and leaves and things like that. So that stuff's already ready for them. By the time they come back, we have things ready for them to go to certain areas. We know when they're going to go to a certain area and we know when we have things done. And then we're planning the next day ahead. And in fact, when we make our diets, so say it's a Tuesday, I go into work on a Tuesday, I'm actually making my diets for Wednesday. So okay. I'm making something that's getting sent out to the keepers so that it's there first thing in the morning on Wednesday so that they can feed it out. So it's a lot of that. We're always kind of thinking one or two steps ahead at least, and then planning it all out. And again, very similar to a human restaurant, but you know, we we know what's going to happen for the most part. We're not going to have a special of the day necessarily. We know like a month in advance what's going to happen unless one of those random emergencies pops up. <laughs> right. Um, is there something that does change? Do you ever get to make like a special diet one day or here or there where you're just like, we can do something fun for anybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, uh, we do that quite often. Um, the different keeper teams will usually call us and let us know if an animal, usually like a gorilla or an elephant, is having a birthday and they want to make a cake for them. Uh, we do lots of ice treat cakes. Um, that's usually just either colored or flavored water, just in different molds. We can make little shapes out of them. We have all sorts of little like jello mold type things so we can make things in different shapes. We do use jello as well so we can make little shapes and hearts and words and things out of jello or applesauce or really anything, um, anything that you and I would eat and especially anything that the animals would eat and we'll take them and we'll kind of layer them all together. I've made or I've um, had us make cakes that are covered in sweet potatoes and hay and then we've also had um, like I said the ice black treats and then we also make things that are like um, it's kind of like a popsicle so kind of like the ice pop treat but it's got meat on the inside. So it's really good for the carnivores on a nice hot day. Sounds amazing to them because, yeah, it's mm -hmm. getting pretty hot here. <laughs> I can understand that. But mm -hmm. that's really fun. That's something where, you know, you you, you want to go and, and show that love and appreciation. But again, you can't just go and get a cake at Walmart kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be made by the animal's own diet. So that can probably be pretty tricky. But I bet those problem solving mm -hmm. skills are, are pretty <laughs> pretty on top of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. We're always excited to help out with that kind of stuff. 
That's great. I bet you get like so much satisfaction when one of the animals actually loves that cake and has just so much fun with it. Seeing them mm -hmm. get that enrichment is really something we're like, yay, you take so much pride in it. It's destroyed in three seconds flat, mm -hmm. but the three mm -hmm. hours it took to make it was amazing. Yes, exactly, exactly. And we're lucky because like one of the reasons I really like this position is I get to go see all those different things, you know, not necessarily every time, but usually when there's a special thing, the keepers either try and take pictures for us or they invite us out to come see. So I get to see all these different animals. I'm not just kind of stuck with just the animals that I work with. Nice, nice. Overall, um, do you know how, how many species are, are in the facility that you take care of, just generally? <sighs> I believe we have at least 150 species, but I'm not sure how much that counts our individual birds and fish because we have a lot of those. <laughs> yes, but that's mm -hmm. still a lot. Off the top of your head, do you know how many individuals you have? I want to say it's like 60,000. I can always look that up later too. That's just <laughs> insane. If it's anything more than 50, I'm overwhelmed. So can you guys imagine having to go and make 60,000 dollars. So obviously some of those are going to be combined, like for your fish and your birds, mm -hmm. you might be doing scatter feeds or something like that, or, you mm -hmm. know, uh, broadcast feeds is what that's called. Um, yep. So, you know, they're not having to feed every single individual fish with these little cups and be like, this one's for you, this one's for you. <laughs> but that's still a lot of different food. So can you imagine having 150 different food orders? that have to come through. So that's why you said earlier, you were making diets for almost like what, seven hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. seven. Yep, exactly. That's why we got to start so early. Yeah, seven <laughs> hours, but that is just so intricate. And again, it's these little things behind the scenes that make zoos flourish. And also this is a new, a newer kind of field that's really coming to light. Really it's animal nutrition in a lot of ways too. Mm -hmm. So this is something where guys, if you're interested in food and health in, like I said, working in a chef kitchen and maybe want to take a different route, guys, send this video to those that you know, take a look at this because this is a really fun field that's really getting a lot of different traction because we are understanding so much more about what the animals eat. Now we can really make them so intricate that it does take a whole team. Guys, it takes a village every time. <laughs> so seeing how animal nutrition is kind of really taking hold, we realize what we put into our bodies matters. Obviously what's going into the animal's bodies matters. Why don't you go and talk about how animal nutrition really is this developing science and how you guys work it into your day. Yeah, um, so animal nutrition was something I really didn't think about when I was in school. Like I kind of knew it was a thing, but it didn't really interest me until I kind of ended up in this position. Um, and animal nutrition to me is so interesting because we are figuring so many things out kind of as time goes on. You know, we've spent years looking at human nutrition, but it's only fairly recently, you know, when we look at all of that science that we've actually started doing animal nutrition. Um, especially outside of things like um, livestock, so like cows and pigs and chickens and things like that. Um, so we do have at my facility, we have a couple nutritionists who that is their job is to come up with the diets for the animals based on, you know, what has worked in the past, what has worked at other facilities. Um, and then they also look at the animal's blood work. So you know, whenever we get a chance to get an animal's blood, they look at it and they see, oh, is there a deficiency? Is there something this animal's getting too much of? Is there something else we can supplement them with? Um, all that kind of a thing. So they also do a lot of research as well. So we, at my facility, we're, I'm really lucky we get to do research. So we get to look at these animals and kind of figure out like, oh, okay, now we can actually track what the animal's eating. We can look at what's coming out of the animal and then we can kind of compare the animal's health which you can't always do out in the wild you know you can't tell a wild animal specifically here's what you're going to eat um, but when we can do that we can learn a whole lot more about them um, and then the other side of that is that uh, people who work in kitchens really do help us out because like i said i worked in a kitchen when i was in college um, quite a few of the people that i've met in this area have either started in a restaurant um, they've worked in the restaurant business, they have some sort of restaurant experience because so many things cross over. Um, and then we get our food from the same places as our restaurant, 
So we actually have a good relationship with that side of the business as well. So they have a good relationship talking about who's getting what kinds of things, and then they can all kind of split it up. So uh, what is just a common misconception about your job? When you tell people what you do, what's kind of the first thing they go, oh, you know, you just... Yeah, I think it's a lot of it is that people think that the food that we're feeding out is gross. They are always like, oh, I need that. And I'm like, yeah, we use the same kind of food. Uh, I think that comes from, you know, when people think of animal food, they think of cat food, of dog food, they think of that kibble. And you don't really look at that and go, boy, I really want to give that a shot. Um, but our food, for the most part, especially for our herbivores, you know, it's the same stuff that comes from restaurants. It's the same truck will stop at a restaurant that will stop at us and unload. So it's all the same kind of stuff. We're looking at the same things. Our rule of thumb is if you wouldn't eat it, you don't give it to the animals. So, you know, it's a lot of things like uh, broccoli, peppers, uh, sweet potatoes, carrots, and apple are probably our biggest hitters. Um, let's see, cauliflower, green beans, leeks, berries. We get all sorts of strawberries and blueberries and blackberries and raspberries um, and lots and lots of romaine lettuce. <laughs> um, so a lot of what we make, especially on the herbivore side, I kind of think of as like just weird salads. You know, it's all stuff you'd probably eat, just might not be in that same combination. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, a lot of people are surprised when they look at our food and they're like, oh yeah, it's really like, I could definitely eat that for dinner. You know, maybe just add some spices or something. What is the favorite part of your job? Oh. <sighs> Um, I think, like I said, it's really, it's that I get to be involved in all the different animals because I have such a hard time picking a favorite animal. Um, I know that working in the kitchen, I'm helping these animals out. I'm doing something very productive for them. You know, I know that food is important. Food helps these animals stay healthy. It helps them reproduce so we can have babies. It helps them, you know, just kind of live longer and have better lives. So I know that what I'm doing is really important. And then I get to go see them get the fun part of their day a lot of times, which is the treats and the fun things like the cakes and stuff like that. So I kind of really get to know what's going on with everything in my facility versus just I come in and I just take care of my animals. So what is the hardest part of your job? Oh, um, so like I said, we have all those itty bitty details. So that can be difficult for people sometimes but it can also be very physically demanding. Um, again, a lot of people think, you know, well, you're just in a kitchen all day, you're just standing there. How is that, you know, really hard? For one, I will say standing all day is very hard work. Um, it can really hurt your feet sometimes. Um, you can get a lot of kind of stress in your shoulders and your arms. Of course, you're working with knives, so there's that as well. Um, so we always are wearing cut gloves and things like that. Um, but that delivery side, like I said, they are moving that 10,000 pounds of food. And that's not just once. That is moving something onto a truck, taking it back off the truck. Sometimes you have to take it off the truck and then move it to another spot. Um, and then they have to do it all over again with the diets. And then they do it with hay. And then they refill hay, all sorts of stuff all day long. So it is just nonstop. You're going through your day. You're always trying to think like two steps ahead of, what is it that I need to do next? Okay, what's the best way that I can put this here? Or where should I stop? Oh, well, they needed this and they needed that and all that kind of a thing. So really like that physical moving around, picking everything up can really get to you after a while. Yes, uh, yeah, that's something. <laughs> um, and let, uh, let's kind of touch on this a little bit, taking some of the stuff that humans do. Uh, and their kitchens to the animal side. So let's talk about some of the hygiene and stuff that goes into it. You know, we, we think about just how clean human kitchens are for the most part. I hope you, <laughs> you know, I hope they are. Um, but so uh, what are some of the things that translate? What's something that you do in a human kitchen to keep it clean that you guys do in your animal kitchens as well? Yeah, um, so it's actually quite similar and we get inspected as well. So there's a department called the USDA and they'll inspect things that are like kitchens for restaurants and things like that, they also come and look at us. So we're held to the same standards. 
Um, so we do things like every day we wipe down all of the surfaces that we use. We use cutting boards so that we can make sure that they go through a dish machine, they get properly sanitized. Uh, we wear gloves whenever we're in the kitchen, we're handling the foods and things like that. We keep lids on everything. Um, we track uh, expiration dates. Uh, we also think a lot about how long food is out of a refrigerator. So there's all sorts of these little itty bitty food safety things that we're always kind of keeping in mind. If somebody comes to deliver us a shipment of food and we say, hey, this is supposed to be frozen, but your truck is at 50 degrees, then we know that that food has not been kept frozen and that it's potentially bad. So that's something we have to look out for because that food is bad, then we could potentially be getting an animal sick, um, things like that. So it's a lot of that little detail, um, wiping everything down, keeping yourself clean and healthy. Um, we also do things where if you're sick, you're not working with any of the primate diets because a lot of things that we have and that we can catch, primates can catch. So we are extra careful with those. It's, it's something where it's taking very, very seriously. So yeah, those inspections that they do um, are, are human grade. They are the same inspections and sometimes more because we also have our accreditation standards too. So those mm -hmm. accreditation standards can also be even higher standards, um, um, can, can put a lot of stress on the job, but as they can say, it's vital. So they are proud to do mm -hmm. those kind of inspections. That's great. Um, I think that's about it. Is there anything that you wanted to share if you had somebody come up to you and you're like, ah, oh, this job sounds cool. What do you think you'd want to go and tell them about it? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing I've learned from doing all of the kind of different jobs I've had is that you don't have to be directly hands-on with an animal to really feel like you're getting that, you know, animal connection. So, like I said, I've been working at this job in some capacity for seven years now. Um, and then I've been a keeper in the meantime, and I've come back and picked up shifts with them here and there. And as much as I've loved and enjoyed working with certain animals where I'm the one who's taking care of them and I get to go in and check on them every day, I really love this job. Like it's, it's just really fulfilling. And I feel like a lot of people see what I'm doing as a step down or kind of a step up, a way to get into the field. Whereas, you know, I'm perfectly content working here. And there's lots of other similar jobs like that where you're not necessarily the caretaker. It's not the big flashy position, but you know, if it makes you happy, then focus on that. Cause you know, that's what's the most important, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, that this is, it's not a stepping stone. It's an, it's a real position that people mm -hmm. can, can think about. So guys, when you think about zoos and you want to thank a keeper, thank all the keepers, not just the ones <laughs> that you're seeing. There's so much back of house stuff. It's like, you know, any business, you're not going to see a lot of the cogs there working, but I promise you, they are necessary. Each little one will help go and make that run. So that's a great time. Next time you guys get to go to a zoo, which I hope is soon, I hope we're, we're getting to that point. You guys mm -hmm. make sure if you see somebody in uniform, give them a big shout out, give them thanks, because I was really excited to do this interview because this is something where I think it's fun. I think it's something where it's, it's so broad. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. you're working the same day, you're working a lot of the same things, but I don't ever think you work the same day twice, do you? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Well, again, I want to give a huge shout out. Um, guys, thanks again for being so supportive with our series. And this, again, this is our Animal Career Day interview series. We're going to keep this going on. We've had a lot of questions uh, as far as us opening goes. So right now, we are taking it day by day. We want to thank everyone so much for being really supportive. Who knows what tomorrow's going to bring. So thank you so much for bearing with us. And please be kind, be patient. You have as much information as we have. We are working as hard as we can. Uh, but we are so excited to see everybody soon. Uh, hopefully we're getting to that point. We are hopeful to continue this series as well, even once we get back to work. So keep an eye out. And again, if you guys have a career that you are interested in in the animal career field, drop it down below. We're always happy to go and look up more information. And I want to give a huge shout out to the zookeeping community for 
coming on when I asked for, for people who wanted to do this. I had some amazing volunteers. Uh, Katie, I want to go and say a huge thank you for taking the time out of your day uh, to come and do this, especially when you have to get up so early. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It is my joy. I love talking to people about what we do because it's just such a kind of mind-blowing thing sometimes. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much and we will catch you next time. Bye everyone.